What are the products of these two reactions? Here are the answers. And if you want to know why the answers are the way they are, I've got an explanation right now. So what in the world does this top reaction do? Well, let's take a look first of all at the conditions. I've got this molecule and aluminum chloride being reacted with this ring. One thing I hasten to point out is that this molecule up here, I realize it's drawn kind of funky. It's got a CH3, CH2, and then a cockle. What in the world is that? Well, that's a CH3 stuck to a CH2, stuck to a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, and then single bonded to a chlorine. That's what that molecule is. Now, you should recognize this as Friedel Crafts acylation. What that does is it places this group right here onto the ring. So in other words, I'm going to get this group appended or attached to that ring somewhere. Where in the world is it going to attach, however? Well, that's all going to depend upon the nature of the pre-existing substituents, these ones up here. So here's what I've got in my lineup. I have an NO2, another NO2, and a bromine. What types of groups are those? Well, NO2s, you should recognize, are withdrawers. So I'm going to write down W and uh, next to each of these guys. And what do withdrawers do? Well, we should remember that W equals M. That is, withdrawers make things go mad. And I always like to remember W equals M. I know that's kind of a silly mnemonic, but it helps me keep that in my brain. What position is meta to this nitro? Well, here's this nitro. If I ignore everything else, the position on this ring that's meta to this nitro happens to be this one right here. So that nitro is vying for that position. Now, if I ignore these groups and look at this nitro, what position is meta to it? Well, this would be ortho, and, and this one would also be meta. Now, I realize that, uh, that these two nitros are meta to each other, but this nitro isn't going to drive anything to, to substitute at this position because that position is already occupied by another nitro. You can't put a new substituent on a position that already has a substituent on it. Now, what about this bromine right here? What kind of group is it? Well, bromine you should recognize as a donor. It's a weak donor, but it still is a donor, so we remember the mnemonic DOPE. Donors make things go ortho and para. Now, what are the, ignoring the nitros, what are the ortho positions relative to this bromine? Well, they are, of course, these positions right here where the nitros are attached. Can the bromine make anything attached to those positions? Absolutely not, because they're already occupied by nitro groups. So the only position that the bromine can actually push for is going to be the p position that's para to it. Let's ignore these nitros and just look at the ring and determine where that is. Well, the position that's para to this bromine is, of course, on the opposite side, which is the same position that is meta to each of these nitros. So both of the nitros and the bromine are all vying or pushing for that position to be the position of substitution. What does that mean? Well, it means that this Friedel Crafts acyl group is going to attach at that position, giving me this is my final product. Now, parenthetically, I just want to mention one thing. Some people ask me this question. If you ever have a circumstance in which you have competition, between a, a donating group and a withdrawing group attached to a ring where the donating group is trying to vie for one position while the withdrawing group is vying for a different one. Who wins? The answer is the donating group every single time. Now that I've said that, there's probably going to be an exception out there and then someone's going to send me an email and ah. Oh. But yeah, as far as I can remember or think off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure that donors are always going to win that battle. So let's take a look at the second group. This reaction is kind of interesting and, and certainly uh, does raise some eyebrows. I've got this type of group attached to it. It looks weird. And then I've got this, aluminum chloride. What kind of a, a reaction uses aluminum chloride? Well, we saw in the previous example that aluminum chloride catalyst is used in Friedel Crafts acylation, which places an acyl group on there. I already have an acyl group dangling off of this ring. Remember, an acyl group is a carbon double bonded to oxygen with some carbons attached after that. So. I'm not going to attach another acyl group. There isn't another acyl group to attach. There's not you know, any source of an acyl chloride dangling off of anything. So what in the world do I have? Well, I've got a chlorine stuck to a carbon. Is there some kind of reaction we know that does that? Well, yeah, if you've got a benzene ring and you react it generically with uh, some type of alkyl chloride and aluminum chloride, that is called Friel Crafts alkylation. And what that does, remember this R just stands for any hydrocarbon chain. What it does is it places that hydrocarbon chain on the ring. That is, it alkylates the ring. Do I have anything like that in this molecule? Well, yeah, I do. If I basically just ignore this stuff right here and pretend that that were a methyl attached to a chlorine, if I were reacting methyl chloride with the ring and aluminum chloride catalyst, it would just put a methyl group, this carbon, onto the ring. Now, why can't I do that if that carbon happens to already be tethered to the ring? 
There's no reason why I can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and number my carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So carbon 1 in this reaction is going to act exactly the same as a carbon attached to a chlorine and with aluminum chloride catalyst added. It's going to attach to the ring. Where is it going to attach? Well, you might be tempted to think, well, why doesn't it attach a meta or something and kind of bend this chain around here and attach a meta? That's going to be pretty hard sale, even though uh, a carbon double bonded to oxygen is a withdrawer, and you might think that's going to make things go meta. And the reason that's tough is because you're going to be forming a bicyclic ring that has this like bend in it. It's going to be kind of weird. It's going to be much easier for this uh, carbon atom to attach to position 5. So that's essentially what's going to happen. You can just imagine me grabbing that CH2 and pulling it around, a bond forming between carbon 5 and carbon 1, that chlorine or chloride getting kicked off uh, through the action of that catalyst. And the final product uh, therefrom will turn out to be this. Isn't that a beautiful reaction? I think so. And I hope you do too. Looking at this bottom leftmost question asks how do hydroxy groups on an aromatic ring direct electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions? The correct answer is C. Now, If you want to know why, I'll post a link here taking you to a previous explanation as to why. In this right bottom most question it asks which of the following reagents could be used in the place of aluminum chloride in a Friedel Crafts acylation? The best way to analyze this kind of question is to look at where aluminum lies on the periodic table. You'll notice that right above aluminum on the periodic table is boron, in the same column that is. Now as you should have learned in general chemistry, elements in the same column as each other on the periodic table have similar properties. Thus boron trichloride could potentially serve as a substitute for aluminum chloride, thereby making the correct answer D.